Father, in the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty God, as we gather today to spend time to listen to your word, remove all the blockages that are there so that we will give of our concentration and open our hearts and minds to receive your word as brother speaks. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that every word that we hear, we will be doers of your word. And this we ask in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 So my dear sisters and dear brother, I'll just keep you all on mute. So the moment you want to ask a question, you can always unmute yourself. So remember the last time when we, when we were sharing the gospel, the, we, we are still on Luke chapter 1. And you remember the last time when we finished our class, we were talking about how Joseph and Mary received that message from the Lord independently of each other, where Joseph was told that the child in Mary's womb would be a male child. It was not through that relationship which he had with Mary, but it was by the Holy Spirit. Mary had a visitation from Angel Gabriel where she was told that she is going to be the mother of Jesus, that she's going to bear a son and she's going to have a, a son whose name is going to be Jesus. So the name Jesus was given both to Mary and to Joseph, independently of each other. And although Mary did not communicate with Joseph, Joseph would never have believed that. Nobody would have believed Mary. Jesus came into this earth because God spoke independently to Mary and to Joseph and spared Mary of that embarrassment, spared Mary of that trouble where she, uh, you know, would have been in big trouble because of that uh, conception, which never took place through that physical union. So we were on verse number 31. So today, let us go to verse number 32 and see what, you know, Angel Gabriel tells Mary. Angel Gabriel tells Mary in verse number 32. So can we go to verse number 32? Does anybody have got your Bibles with you? Okay, let me see if I can put the Bible. We were on Luke chapter 1, verses 32 to 44. Let us, let us go here. He will be great and will be called. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, sister. What are you? That. Can you see that? Uh, yes, we are all there. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. Okay. Were you all able to see that? He will be great yes, brother. and will be called the son of the most high. And yeah. the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. Okay. He will be great and will be called the son, son of, of the of most, most high. high. And the Lord God, God will, will give, give to him the throne, the throne of, of his, his father, father David. David. You know, you know, when you read these verses, you know, you must remember. Mary was very familiar with these verses. You know, they all had heard about David. 
David was a very, very, very great king of Israel. Does everyone know that, right? David was a very great king in the in the kingdom of Israel. And you know, to say such a thing, for, for, for Angel Gabriel to say these things to Mary, especially to somebody who was Jewish, it was very significant. It, it had a lot of impact. It had a lot of significance. Or I would say it had a lot of meaning to say these words to Mary. Because Mary was Jewish in the first place. And David was a very great king of the kingdom of Israel. But you know, it was clear that one of the descendants of King David would be the Messiah. Listen to this very carefully. It was written in the Old Testament by the, by, by the prophet Isaiah that one of the descendants of King David will be the Messiah. And for Mary, who was Jewish, was familiar. You know, she was a very godly person. She used to go to the synagogue very often. She was brought, raised up by very godly parents. When the angel Gabriel is telling her that he will be the son of the most high God and the, and the Lord God will give him the throne of the ancestor David, this Mary began to understand. She knew exactly what these words of uh, angel Gabriel were. Let me put it to you differently, my dear sister, my dear brother Clifford. Let me put it to you differently. You know, today, many of you know that there is a way to know whether the child is going to be a male or a female. Do you know that? If you go to a hospital and you know you go to certain hospitals, not every hospital will legally do that. But if you want to know the sex of the baby, whether the child is a male or a female, do you know that by ultrasound, they can actually find out whether that child is going to be a male or a female? I'm asking you all. Do you know that? Yes. Right, Sister Geraldine? Now, when the doc, say for example, there's a mother who's got five daughters. Who? How many daughters? Five daughters. Her husband, the whole family has been praying for a, for a son. And now she's gone for an ultrasound. And that doctor or that nurse, when he does the ultrasound, knowing that you have got five uh, daughters, now tells you, you know what? The sixth baby that you're going to have is going to be a boy. Do you know what it's going to mean to you as a mother? I'm asking you. Do you understand what it's going to mean to you as a mother when you have got almost three or four or five daughters? No, I don't think any. it makes any difference to anybody, does it? Hello, my dear sisters. Brother Clifford, are you there? You're all muted, brother. That's you right. can unmute yourself, no? You all can unmute yourself. Yeah, brother, you muted us. That's what we got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can unmute yourself. I only muted you only for that for the beginning. When you okay. want to ask a question or reply, you can unmute yourself. That, op that option is there. What I'm saying is, if you have got three or four or five daughters and now when you go for that ultrasound, the doctor tells you, you're going to have a male child. Is it going to mean a lot of things to you, to a mother? Definitely. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Yes. Without a doubt. Because every time your in-laws, your husband, your, oh, you got four or five daughters. And then, okay, let us put it the other way. You got four or five sons and you're looking for a daughter. And all of a sudden, you know, when you go for that, it can be either way, you know, uh, the doctor says, you're going to have a girl. You got four boys or five boys. Now you're going to have a daughter. Can you imagine the, the joy that will come to the mother when she knows that? What joy it will bring to the parents. And here is Angel Gabriel telling Mary, this child whom you're going to name Jesus, he will be great and he will be called the son of the most high God. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father, David. David. So what does this mean to Mary? She is going to be the mother of the king. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Imagine if you are now chosen to be the mother of the savior. Do you think it is a small position? 
I'm asking you, my dear sisters, brother Clifford, oh, no. if you yeah. were told by somebody that you're going to be, you know, one day the chief minister, you're going to overthrow Stalin in, 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 in Tamil Nadu and you're going to be the chief minister. If somebody tells you right now, okay, do you think that you will ever believe, you'll say, me chief minister? Can never be. But see, angel comes from heaven and he says, you know what? Clifford, the Lord has just sent me from heaven to you to tell you that you're going to be the chief minister of Tamil Nadu. Oh, forget about chief minister. You're going to be the prime minister of India. Yeah. Brother Clifford, are you going to be yeah. happy? For me? Yeah, we'll start planning now itself. <laughs> we'll start planning now itself. But the point is, be very at this expensive. point in time, at this point in time, you must be so fed up with the system that is going around. You see the corruption going around. You see so many negative things around. And now, this particular angel, a divine celestial creature is coming up to you and saying, you know, Clifford, you have been chosen to become the Prime Minister of India. And therefore, now, you need to get yourself prepared. Isn't that going to bring a lot of significance to you? Yes. Sure, sure. Sure, it's going to be. And here is the angel Gabriel telling Mary, who's, who's Jewish, who knows what these words mean, that she is going to be the mother of the Messiah. She is going to be the queen mother of that king who's going to be sitting on the throne. Can you imagine what joy it must bring, bring to her? And at the same time, there will be also thoughts running into her mind. Me, mother of the king? And I'm going to get married to Joseph, that carpenter. What is God saying? I mean, how can this be possible? Maybe if I was getting married to Herod's family, maybe I was getting married in, in the palace. I can, it makes sense to me, you know, like, you know, people in the palace can get a throne and all. And here, a carpenter's son, that too, we are not going to have a relationship. I'm going to have a child. As it is, my mind is running at the heart. I'm going to tell Joseph. And now the angel is giving, telling me this news. That he's going to give me the throne, my son, who's going to be born, the throne of his ancestor David. Do you think it is easy for any person to even take this news and just absorb this news and digest this news? You know, my that dear sisters, why, brothers, that when is we are why, reading that scriptures, is why, when we are reading, that is why, yes, brother Clifford, that is, yeah. That is why Mary exclaimed, uh, "How is that going to be?" How is this going to be? She, mm. As soon as the angel Gabriel gave her the news, she she's straight away said, how, how can this be to me? Yes, brother. I, mm. I, I agree with you. But we are on verse number 32. And in verse number 32, the angel Gabriel is giving us some news which is good news. First and foremost, she's in front of an angel. We already saw how, how difficult it is, what her mind must be running. And now he's giving a commentary and he's telling her, you're going to be the mother of the, of, the, of the savior. You're going to be the mother of the Messiah. Now he's going to have the throne of the ancestor David. What exactly must be going on in Mary's mind? What is going on in Mary's mind? I mean, you know, getting some news that you know which 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 in the natural looks very easy i mean you know you know uh, brother clifford listen to this very carefully when i give you the example of you becoming the prime minister do you think at this very moment are you having the experience or having you are you having any knowledge of even being a minister in, in tamil nadu have you really taken a government position do you know the system how the government runs do you know how, how ministry runs? Do you know how to run a state to get, actually go and be a chief prime minister of India? No. No. It is An not angel easy. comes. Listen to this. You have no idea of having worked in a... I'm sure you will not have worked in any government office, right? We, work, we all worked in government office. Yeah, we, are all, we are all governmenters only. <laughs> government staff. You are all government staff. Yeah, looks like, like, yeah. looks like right yeah. now, yeah. Look, looks me. like right now, brother yeah. Clifford, yeah. this Look is the Lord speaking to you. That's why you're the blessed among women here. Who knows that whether you are the one chosen to be the next chief minister? <laughs> yeah. You never know what you're called for. Right? But at this very moment, as I speak to you, 
I'm not Angel Gabriel, okay? But I'm just trying to give an example of Mary. If somebody comes and tells you, Clifford, you are going to be a prime minister. You have not even been a minister. You have never been a chief minister. You're going to run a country. Do you have the experience to run a country? Do you no, understand no. the impact no, no, of running no, a country? No. Is, Do you know all that? Very, no. It is very, very difficult. It is very difficult. And that's exactly what I'm making the point here. In verse number 32, the angel Gabriel is saying, he will be great and will be called the son of the most high God. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father, David. He's telling Mary that the child that she is going to bear is going to be the son of the most high. And he's going to be sitting on the throne of his father, David. Do you think this is making any sense to Mary when she's not even, even getting married to somebody in the palace? She's getting married to a simple, uh, ordinary carpenter. That too, she's going to have a child, not out of, uh, through marriage. It's going to be out of wedlock. Is this news what she's getting? Is very difficult, very difficult for her to relate to these two, two concepts, two different concepts, being an ordinary person and then uh, being the mother of a, the king. King of, so, king of the... Mary uh, would not have thought of anything because she didn't have an idea of anything of this. No, sister... So, sister... Um, so, Sister Geraldine, uh, those days, during the time of Mary, there were many virgins who were waiting. Who the the concept of the the, the king being born was already there in that society. So Mother Mary also was a was a candidate to that, and she was also praying, and they had certain places where they were praying for the gift of being the mother of okay. Christ. But okay, Brother Clifford, suddenly when somebody called, tells you... Brother Clifford, I'm, yes. I'm just sorry to interrupt you. Can you show me the scripture where the virgins were waiting? No, it is not I in know. the scripture, brother. We have got traditions for that. We have got so, traditions. We have got uh, our... Uh, uh, the these are documented those days. Uh, okay, and okay. These are, everything is not in the scripture. Okay. Okay, now let me come to the truth. That, uh, now let me come to the truth of God's word and expose that tradition for you, which is not true. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes, yes. See, you said to me based on tradition. See, nobody knows about tradition because it all goes by word of mouth. People just try to invent yes. something and make it tradition. Yes. Do you know? Do you know that when Jesus was born in Bethlehem? Nobody even knew, even when he was two years old. Yes. yes. They were reading scriptures in the synagogue that the Messiah is going to be sent. They knew that the Messiah was supposed to come. When the Messiah actually arrived, nobody was there to greet him in Bethlehem. He did not even have a place to be born in Bethlehem. The yes. angels were told that to the angels. I mean, the, the shepherds were told by the angels. And the shepherds went to Bethlehem. They saw what the angels told them. And they went away glorifying God. That Mary took Joseph. Um, Mary, Joseph and took the baby Jesus. Went back to Nazareth. Then the, the, then, then the Magi came after two years. Almost when Jesus was close to two years. That's the time when they came to Jerusalem. People did not know in Jerusalem that there was even a king born. That there was a Messiah born. And then there was all an uproar in the palace. Then the Herod said, you remember we were talking about the worship, we were talking about the Magi a few months ago. I don't know whether you remember that. Even when Jesus was two years old, nobody even knew that there was a Messiah that was already born. So you know what, if you go based on tradition, it will always going to, you know, make the word of God of no effect. The moment you introduce tradition based on what somebody has here say, you have already cut off the word of God. So let's keep traditions aside. Let's stick only to the word. Because Rather, the, the word of God itself was an inspiration by the Holy Spirit. It was, It is also a word of mouth. It is yes, the word brother, of the mouth which has, for 300 years, yeah. for 300 years, the Christian religion was only word, by word of mouth. Only uh, at the year of 350, the, uh, the, all the, um, uh, the, the uh, what uh, so-called uh, leaders of the church, they joined together and they 
they found the old old test old uh, scriptures the new scriptures everything and they put together and after that came the the uh, bible or the gospel which you we profess right so it is not it is all it is an inspiration uh, there are so many gospels which are not even shown to us we are we are not aware of those even we have got a gospel by saint thomas which is not right. shown see, to us see brother see brother yes the word it of is god is not approved it was not approved so it does not come no over see, the brother, years yes the word of god is inspired by the holy spirit yes the word of god is inspired by the holy spirit that's why the bible is a is a book which is not written by men it is written by the holy spirit and therefore yes. all the books that are in the bible is what the holy spirit wanted to be written and therefore we got enough matter that is written in the bible to yes. give us enough revelation instead of going to something which is outside the bible because the moment you go outside the bible brother you are not going to focus what is written because what is written is inspired by the holy spirit so you know what the moment you come to what is written in fact i don't think in our own lifetime whether we are going to be 70 80 we'll able to cover the entire bible and get the complete revelation so if what is written is not going to be finished in our own lifetime why do we want to waste our time which the holy spirit did not want it to be written so let's keep it aside for the moment let's not go to tradition let's not include something about virgins let's not include something because you know why when jesus was actually born the truth is what is written is nobody knew nobody knew that he was born nobody was even anticipating the messiah that he had come they were they were expecting the messiah but it's something like this when he's already there he's already 2 years old nobody recognizes him nobody knows he's already on the earth the kingdom of israel is already having god almighty in the flesh living on their soil but nobody is aware Yes, so that is because that come. that is because. From, from, sorry, you know, brother, when they come from the from the far from the Middle East, you know, they came from Iraq, they came from Babylon, those Magi, you know, when they came to Bethlehem or they came to 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 Jerusalem, that's the time at the town square they began to ask, "Where is the king that had to be born?" And they were always surprised, "King to be born? We have only Herod. Who's the king to be born?" And then finally, those. wise men and all those scholars then they told herod yes in bethlehem is going to be born and truly he was born in bethlehem they even sent them to bethlehem but the star did not take them to bethlehem the star took them to nazareth so you know what what the holy spirit wants to reveal to us what the holy spirit inspired the people to write the bible is already there so for the moment in this class let's only stick to the written word because the moment we stick to the written word there is so much we going to learn out of it moment we take it out of the uh, our tradition no brother it's going to simply you know pollute the thing and we will we, we can no no brother uh, to tradition you know brother we catholic, can go, oh, as why? catholic as catholics we have got the tradition of the we we know what has happened before so that is also word of mouth but the the you go to the history of the church then we we have to connect that with the bible what we are reading so See, brother, then that that gives us more no meaning i'm going i'm going to show you some what to show you something. okay john 663 just look at this verse just look at this verse just look at this verse what does jesus say these are words of jesus himself look at what he says in john 663 can you read this please it is the spirit that gives life the flesh is of no avail the words that i have spoken to you are spirit and life yes the words that i have spoken to you are spirit and life that means the word jesus has been spoke as spoke they are inspired by the holy spirit the word and the holy spirit are one remember we are talking about the holy trinity we are talking about the father the son and the holy spirit so the father the son and the holy spirit the whole the perfect trinity they are perfectly united nobody even talks one contrary to the other so whenever jesus did anything he always did what his father told him to do he never did anything outside the word every time jesus said i always do what my father wants me to do i always do what my father i don't do anything outside the word so whenever we who are following the word of god we must remember the word of god is the holy spirit 
so when the word of god is being spoken and the word of god is being preached and the word of god is being shared we must stick to the word because the holy spirit is the one who's going to give us more and more revelation based on the written word the moment you bring in something which is outside the word we are not sure it is tradition that's why we must stick to the word so that when we take the word the holy spirit can give us more and more that's why i was trying to make this point okay nothing to you know nothing to digress if we, we need to have more information that's always good but when we stick to the word we are on a very very safe wicket we are on a safe platform we are on solid ground but the moment we begin to shift traditions you know what happens nobody can prove that no you you it's 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 it's, it's history it's something that is there but the moment you stick to the word now the holy spirit was inspired that word can give us more and more revelation are you with me yes yeah are you with me my brother clifford okay yes yeah so very important for us to stick to the word to stick to the written word because jesus said the word that i've spoken to you is spirit it is life and what kind of life what kind of life what is what spirit holy spirit amen amen praise god praise god so let's go back Let's go back to this verse, verse number thirty-two, and you know what? In verse number thirty-two, all these things Angel Gabriel is saying to Mary, and then he says this to Mary: Mary, in her natural self, or in a natural, uh, in, in 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 just a natural being, is finding it difficult. I mean, look at look at Mary. Mary was just like you and me. She was not something. She was not you know God Almighty. She was a created being. she had come through you know her parents uh, uh, anna and joseph that's what they again say tradition we nothing is written in the bible about her parents that's again coming to tradition but she had a mother she had a father and she was born out of that relationship so she would have been raised up as a godly woman here is god telling her mary the child that you're going to bear not or not of joseph you're going to bear this child from the holy spirit is going to be the son of the most high he's going to have the throne of his father david now for mary to observe all this for mary to take in all this for mary to 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 to, to assimilate or to digest this news is not easy it's extremely difficult why because all the circumstances all the situation that is around her is not pointing out to that particular reality she's not she is not uh, going to get married to a prince from the from the from the palace she is going to get married to an ordinary simple carpenter and yet the angel is telling us something which is much difficult for her in a natural sense to absorb okay so let's go to verse number 33 verse number 33 let us see what he says and he yeah go ahead sister go ahead and he will reign over the house of jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end Amen. oh my goodness what news is he giving her and he will reign i want you to listen to this verse very carefully you know why here is a promise given to mary that jesus will reign over the house of jacob or what for 30 years for 40 years for 50 years for ever Ever, ever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. You know, I'm going to come back to this verse, but I think I'm tempted to explain this verse right now because you know what? Considering that we've got very little time to finish this class, let me take this last verse and let me give you the significance of this. Is that okay? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. You know. The the Jewish nation as a whole, you know, the whole all the Jews as a whole, did not accept Jesus as their king. You know that, no? We all know that. Did they accept Jesus as their king? No. Would they ever have killed the king of of the of the Jews? No. If they had Even to no, accept no. him as a king. Even now, no. Yeah, all the people would have united, and they would have probably thrown Herod out. They would have accepted Jesus as king, but the Jewish nation. they did not accept jesus as king but listen to this thousands of jews did accept jesus as king as you can see on the day of pentecost you know on the day of pentecost what happened you read that in acts chapter 2 verse number 
I think it is where Peter preached the first gospel. I want to show you that. One second. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse number 41, I believe. Let's go there. Acts chapter 2, verse number 41. So those who received his word were baptized and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. Do you know when this happened? When Peter and the apostles received the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, they were completely changed. Peter preached the first gospel to that whole congregation that was there. They were cut through the heart. And that day, 3,000 souls, they were baptized in the Holy Spirit and they were entered, they were given entry into the kingdom of God. So on the day of Pentecost, although the people, the Jewish nation did not accept Jesus as king, but on the day of Pentecost, these particular Jews, 3,000 of them in one single sermon, accepted Jesus as their king. Is that right? Yes. It is, uh, brother, uh, concurrently God worked through the words of Peter and transformed them. It is, exactly. it is, it is not uh, Peter in isolation who, had, uh, who was able to do it. God concurrently worked through him. He, that, is, that is how they had a change of heart and they came to believe. Correct, correct. So, you know, my dear brother Clifford and my dear sister, the day Peter received the Holy Spirit, the day he preached the first gospel, they were told not to preach the gospel. They were told to stay in Jerusalem until they received power from on high. So they never ever preached or never ever taught until the Holy Spirit came. But on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came, 3,000 souls were entered into the kingdom. And you know, later on, Paul, he was writing to the Romans. You know, I believe in Romans chapter 2, verses 28 onwards. I can't remember exactly, but it's written in Romans chapter 2. You know what he says? The people who are, who, are, who are the Jews, he never said the people who are circumcised are Jews. He never said the people who had gone through the circumcision of Abraham are Jews. He said the true sons of Abraham, they are the real Jews. And who are the real sons of Abraham? Those who believe in Jesus. Those who believe in Jesus, I want to take you to, I think, let, let us go and see this. Romans chapter 2, verses 28 to 29. Let us see this. For who is not a real Jew, who is one outwardly, nor in true circumcision, something external and physical? For who is not a real Jew, who is one outwardly, nor in true circumcision, something external and physical. He's, he, he's saying that. No. He is a Jew who is one inwardly and real circumcision is a matter of the heart, spiritual and not literal. Your hand. Praise is not from men, but from God. You know, my dear sisters, when Jesus was accepted at King, the people of Israel, when they saw this man, Jesus, who was eventually going to have his kingdom for all eternity, they couldn't look at Jesus in the flesh as their king because they said, oh, this is Mary and Joseph's son. This is the carpenter's son. They could never accept him as the king. They could not even recognize him as the Messiah. But this same Jesus who died, rose again and went back to the father, when he sent the Holy Spirit, when the gospel was preached by Peter, the same people who had actually been hearing Jesus, and the, they accepted him as their king. And today, you and I who are talking about Jesus are actually um, a, 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 a manifestation, I would say, uh, a realization of that prophecy in verse number 33. What is that prophecy in verse number 33? What is that prophecy in verse number 33? Can we go back there? Luke chapter 1, verse number 33. Look at that verse number 33. What does it say? And, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. No end. Of his kingdom there will be no, no end. You know my brothers and sisters, listen to this. Oh, yeah, I am a Jesus has been reigning oh. over the true children of Abraham. That is the church. 
ever since his resurrection okay, from the dead. Is everyone with me? Yes, yes. You know, ever since the resurrection of Jesus, when Jesus died, rose again, went back to the Father and sent the Holy Spirit to us, ever since then, Jesus has been reigning over the two children of Abraham, the, 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 the church, you know, that is what is the present church today. Ever since the resurrection, how do we know that we are the children of Abraham? How do we know? Look at what he says, St. Paul says in, uh, in, in Galatians chapter 3, verse number 29. Galatians chapter 3, verse number 29. Look at what he says here. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring as according to the promise. You know, when we just read verse number 33, he says, he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom shall never end. His kingdom will not even, he'll never end. He's just going to live forever. And he says, how? How is, the, how is he going to be the, 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 how are we going to be the sons and daughters of that heavenly father? How are we going to be the children of Abraham? We are going to be the children of Abraham because we belong to Christ. And if we belong to Christ, we are the offspring of Abraham. We are the seed of Abraham. And therefore, according to that promise, we are now belonging to the kingdom that will never end. Are you with me, my dear sisters? Yes. Now, I want to show you one very important truth before we go. Before we go, I want to show you one very important truth. Okay? Look at this again. Verse number 33. Before we go, this is the last verse we'll do today. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom will have no end. Does it say that? Yes. Does it say that? Yes. I want yes, you to does, keep this in mind. I want you to keep this in mind and listen to me very carefully. Listen to this. At the time when angel Gabriel came to Mary and said, you are going to bear a son and his kingdom shall not end. end. Mm. Perfectly right. Mary yes. believed it. She delivered Jesus. She raised him up. Everything is fine. Jesus is hanging there on the cross. Jesus is hanging there on the cross, gasping for breath. Okay. And the Lord has told Mary, your son's kingdom shall have no end. He will be sitting on the throne of Jacob forever. And she's looking at her son there, panting. He's calling out to his father. He's in his final moments. What is going on inside Mary? Lord, did you bluff me? Did you cheat me? Did you, did you deceive me? You said, my son's kingdom shall never end. You said his kingdom shall never end. You said that he'll be sitting on the throne of Jacob forever. You said that I'll be the queen mother sitting next to my son, that we will have a kingdom which will live forever. I see my son whom you said will live forever, whose kingdom will not end forever. He's hanging there on the cross. He's listening his final moment. And now they bring him down from the cross and they put a dead body in, in Mary's arms. God... Did you deceive me? Did you fool me? Did you call the angel and made a mess out of my life all these years, these 33 years, and made me raise a boy, and now you're giving me a dead body, and you said, his kingdom shall not end. When we come back, my dear sisters, my dear brothers, next time, we are going to go further into detail on this. With this thought, let us just keep this in mind. God has spoken his word but what is happening in reality is something different. This is the son whose kingdom is not to end, whose throne will be there forever. He's gasping for breath. And Mary finally is holding the dead body of her son. What is running inside her mind? What is running inside of her? God, did you deceive me? Did you say to me that all this what I did for was a big joke on my life? Did you play games with me? And I want you all to meditate on it based on what happened at the resurrection and where is Jesus right now, the right hand of the father. But at that very moment when she's holding the dead body, did you lie 
to me was it all a joke was it a game that god played with my life i want you all to meditate on it before we go to the resurrection because this is exactly the situation of each one of us in our life there is a promise of god given to us we have the word of god given to us but when the actual situation comes and we see that corpse lying in front of us we simply buckle and we say it's all over when the lord says no when i said it i mean it when i said it it will be fulfilled when i said it it is already finished it is already done with these thoughts my dear sisters my dear brother let us close our class for today when we come back we'll proceed further and we shall see how mary was able to take all that and yet hold on because she knew and she knew she had a promise in verse number 33 that would keep her strong that would keep her in trust that would keep her going even to the extent that when jesus went to the back to the father she was with the disciples interceding when the holy spirit came amen amen, amen. in the amen. upper room it was mary who was with the disciples because she knew mary was the one this, mary was the one who collected them together and kept exactly them. exactly she was the one who was there. so that's why we need to stick to the scriptures because the scriptures are going to reveal to the holy spirit such amazing truths to us so that we when we stick to that we will be enlightened to gain that trust to develop that trust to develop that faith to not to quit not to give up if mary did not give up why should you and i give up we look to mary and be inspired by mary of what she went through and yet stood her ground she stood like a rock on that promise knowing that god was always faithful and the same god is faithful to you and me right at this very moment in the name of jesus amen mm. it's god it's god so somebody wants to do a closing prayer before we we go and uh, when we come the next time we'll take it further and we'll go deeper into the subject anybody wants to do a closing prayer sonia you do ma sonia brother sonia is there yes yeah, sister sonia go ahead sister sonia do a closing prayer for us please okay let me let me say let me say father in heaven thank you so much lord for teaching us tonight that although mary received the promise that she would bear a son whose kingdom would never end that she would bear a son whose name is jesus the messiah that she would bear a son who would be sitting on the throne of jacob which would never ever end and it would be forever mary who eventually went through all that in her life she did not see jesus sitting on the throne she did not see jesus ever sit on the throne she never had the opportunity even in this life to sit on the throne where her son was the king but get mary put on that promise of angel gabriel that his kingdom would never end if she who could conceive without uh, having a relationship with a man could bear a son she knew that god could even bring a dead body to a life and that's exactly what happened mary who bore jesus without a physical sexual relationship with joseph or with any man if she could believe that promise and bring jesus into this earth she knew god could even raise her son from the dead today lord we who have heard the word what does it mean to us are we here to learn theories and are we here to learn doctrines are we here to learn philosophies or are we here to extract that truth and apply it in our day to day life help us lord to understand just like mary to be inspired by mary's life that lord just as she stuck to the word she believed the promise of god she saw that word come to pass not in this lifetime but she knew and she knew that her son was special that he was the son of the of the most high god you have given us your promise lord through your written word 
your word is spirit your word is life help us to stand on this word to believe this word no matter how bad our situation is right now because lord when we stand and believe your word you have promised us victory which your son already finished for us on the cross and for giving us this understanding lord that from today onwards we are never going to accept even what a doctor has said or what the bank has said or what our marriage is right now heading for but what your promise says and your promise says it is finished it is done victory is already achieved and we are standing on that victory we are not going for victory we are standing and moving from victory to victory from glory to glory in the glorious and matchless name of jesus amen amen amen, amen.